This is Tom Asprey with the Viper Report Market Wrap video for the week ending September 27th. Well, after one more trading day in September, we get the start of the new quarter, which comes with lots of new data. In an article I'm writing for Forbes, haven't finished it yet, uh, I focus on how people get caught up on the seasonal factors like they did in early September when they don't agree with the technicals. Over the years, I have stressed that before you take any action based on a seasonal tendency, you got to look at what the technicals are telling. And even though the daily technicals looked weak on the stock market at the end of August, the weekly was very positive. Here's a sneak peek at tomorrow's front page table for the Viper Report and, and Viper Hot Stocks Report. In here we have the new quarterly pivots. Uh, they're tentative at this point because we have one more day of trading. And I'll have all the quarterly pivots from our clients uh, next weekend. But these are quite interesting. You can see that uh, pretty much every market is above that. And you can all correlate, you know, that uh, for the example for the SPY at 552, the 20 day is at 563. So you look at that as first support and then the 20 week is at 545. Um, stark bands are kind of targets and you can see that the above the 1.5 percent above the 20 day EMA that just means that you know you can have a one and a half percent pullback and really not change the trend. Two percent for the Q's you can see that its new quarterly pivot is 471 one etc and the 20 day EMA it's a little closer because it weakened a little bit on Friday. Unless you're a short-term scalper, the data on this table will pretty much keep you on the right side of the market in most instances. I have had a number of students uh, tell me this summer that uh, how the Stark bands have really kept them out of some bad trades and in some good trades. This is a pretty interesting chart. The New York Composite, the broadest measure of the stock market. And you can see that through Jerry's wonderful programming, you have these dots when the NYSE moved, in this case, above the Stark band or below. So remember that these probability bands developed by Manny Stoller just pretty much tell you that when it's down below the lower band, it, you know, the rubber band is stretched to the bottom and the probabilities favor either a pause or a rebound. And in both cases, we got a little bounce here week to week. And then the final low here, and or and not the final, but the October 23rd low, which is a great buying opportunity. You can see this point B, you know, we got above the Stark band. So it's either going to correct or it's going to move sideways. So you can see in that case, we just moved sideways for like five weeks and then accelerated the upside. You know, same in, in March of April, you know, that correction we got extended. So... You know, if you're looking to take profits, you see this usually two weeks or more in a row above the Stark bands. It's time to take some money off the board. We had a very nice pullback. This blue line, another nice programming job by Jerry, you know, is the rising 20-week EMA. So it changes color. Yellow declining, blue is rising. And you can see that last week the NYC made a new high here very close to a quarterly pivot and here we see that the new pivot level for the last quarter is at 1886 1888 6 so an interesting chart you can see that uh, for most of the time we drop below the quarterly pivot here you know in uh, August but we never closed below it which is significant this monthly chart has also the AD lines. You can see a nice flag formation here. Um, if you haven't gotten into charting, I suggest take a look at. Uh, this is a pretty good example of how these continuation patterns can be used to determine upside targets by looking at the width of the formation and then adding it to the breakout level. See for the monthly, we're, we already made it above the yearly R2, so a couple more months we'll get the new yearly projections, which you see are at pretty uh, good. We were in 22, we were pretty much below 
you know, the yearly pivot. And then in 23, we started moving above it, even though pretty much people were bearish in stocks at that point. And it stayed above it for the past two years. So um, it's a good trend indicator. Uh, down below here, you know, if you're just following the the uh, AD lines, you know, they pretty much had you in the stocks all year. The stocks only AD line had this major resistance, uh, overcame in early 2024. It's been above its moving average and rising moving average. So, uh, you know, it's a little extended as it not as much as it was in 21, but in that area and the NYSE, all that includes everything on the NYSE composite, broke out a little earlier and then has been moving strongly, making another new monthly high. So, you know, those of you who've uh, seen some of my classes or taken them, you note that, uh, you know, in 2007, the monthly, weekly, and daily advanced decline lines form negative divergences when we were peaking in October. Let's look at a few more. Uh, pretty much the weekly, you know, new highs in the SPY, new highs in the the weekly AD lines here. So that's, I'll go ahead. You can see that, uh, you know, uh, they're a bit extended. Equal weight is keeping pace. She made a new high last week too. Uh, you recall back in here, that's when everyone was worrying about the divergences. That meant the, to them that the the weighted SPY or the S&P 500 cash, which are weighted in favor of the, the mega cap tech stocks, you know, was spelling disaster. Uh, you can see the market resolved itself, and now they're both in gear. The daily AD lines, also positive. You know, the little pullbacks we had in September didn't really change the trend. We didn't get a resolution, a clear one, last week on the growth value issue. Uh, you know, the Qs were up, you know, uh, 1%, you know, and uh, above those monthly highs. AD line strong at a new high. The weekly RS still below its moving average here. So you'd like to see a strong move, you know, uh, what it would take would be a week where the the Qs, you know, outperform the SPY by, say, a percent or so. That would be enough to kick it back above its moving average. If you look at the daily, looks a little more encouraging. You know, the moving average has started to turn up. So we kickstart this in the upside. Uh, ETF, uh, Viper ETF, we're long both the Qs and SPY. And it doesn't mean only one will go up. It's just how fast. NYSE stocks making new highs was really strong a week ago. Last week they tailed off right in the 250, 220, 250 area, but lower peaks in the new lows, so that's a good sign. You know, if you if we start to see some uh, rising number of new lows, that'd be a cautionary note. Um, the VIX VXN, uh, the VIX closed fractionally above its moving average here, so. Uh, an increase in volatility. That's what some are saying. Um, you know, looking at these previous peaks to see if we get above them. Typically, if we start to see a, a bottom in the VIX or the VXN, that means another pullback in stocks like we saw here in early September. Small caps rebounded. They had a pretty orderly correction. You can see we pulled back, and this is the IJR. That's a iShare product core S&P small cap. A little less volatile than the at Russell, and uh, you can see we dropped down to got close to its 20-day EMA, you know, and uh, the AD line for the 600 has bounced off its moving average. So, and volume did pick up on last on Friday. That's a good sign. The OBV is slightly positive. Let's focus now on the watch list, uh, the ETF watch list here. They were sent out early this morning, so. Hopefully many of my subscribers had a chance to look at them. You know, don't hesitate to send me questions regarding these lists. I do respond and would be happy to help you better utilize them. Good news, market gauge 81.5% are above their quarterly pivots. You see growth is at 100%. Started to lead value. Value going into early September was at 100%, I believe. 
You can see what's holding growth back, you know, XLK and VGT, which is the Vanguard equivalent, really, of, of XLK, except it has a lot more issues in it, are both still in weekly negative mode. You know, the dailies are positive here. Um, XLV had a rough week, you know, and uh, on heavier volume, so it gave a daily DTS. And on the value side, um, energy continues to hold the value back. So XLE negative across the board, XOP, NVDE, the Vanguard Energy Fund are all negative. 45% are positive DVS, less than 50. That's not a good sign, you know. And uh, 72 of the weekly, um, pretty much all the short ETFs, you know, are negative. That means they're favored, you know are likely to go down even further, whereas the long ETFs are positive, except for the leveraged Q and uh, TNA are still have not given weekly buy signals. If you look at the changes from last week, some interesting, the most significant one was, and a positive change was energy went from 16.7 to 50 percent, but technically really not seeing a lot of signs you know, that uh, suggests we should be buying right here, though I don't want to ignore these numbers. You can see in the past here, XLB, 100%, you know, it held the 50 level a month ago, now at 100%. XLI, not quite, has been as strong, or XLI rather, XLY has been very strong. You know, got down to 50 in early August, pretty much when it bottomed. And now it's at 100%. So XLC saw a little deterioration back to 83. And uh, XLB was the leading sector up 3.5. Um, followed by you know, XLY is up over 2. XLI up 1.6. And XLK up 1.3. As I mentioned before, uh, healthcare was down. You know, it triggered a negative 3 DTS. So... And the DTSs are still negative on on XLE, uh, XLP, XLF, and XLRE, as you can see from the table in the report here. So you know a cup, some four hours, or one hour rather, sells here on Friday. So we'll see if they materialize into you know anything else. XLRE, you know, has both a daily and a four hour, and of course XLE. You know, it's still negative on the DTS. It's just the percentage of the components that look like they're having problems. Um, this shows you kind of what the Viper ETF report is in. Uh, value, uh, ITB, you know, etc. cetera. Um, KRE is interesting. It had quite the pullback to support and was bounced a little bit on Friday. So I'll be watching that bounce closely. You know, uh, we went long. Uh, SMH a while back, so watching this pullback as it may be an opportunity to add to that position. So we looked at some of the changes in the various sectors. Let's drill down and look at some of the individual components. You can see the energy, 50% uh, have a three-day DTS, but only 18% have a weekly and only 25% are above their quarterly pivots. So, you know, the ones that have the, the DTS and the 4-hour are PSX and VLO. So if we are making a bottom, those two should come out you know, earliest, as with SLB, Schlumberger. Materials, lots of, you know, Dow Chemical, new weekly DTS. Um, copper was really strong last week. Um, FCX and uh, SCCO is in another report. One of my astute students picked up on Southern Copper, which had a great week. And Honeywell, you know, three DTS weekly, so it may be flipping the weekly here. Uh, UPS is positive. Of course, FedEx has gotten creamed. And though most people going into their earnings liked FedEx better than UPS, what you like and what goes up or down is not necessarily the same thing. Interesting here, you know, in the consumer discretionary, two auto parts uh, specialty realtors, ORLY and AZO, have both given 
th three day DTS signals. So uh, that uh, might be something to be keep an eye on. Um, consumer staples have seen some profit taking, you know, whether it's over or not, um, you know, which should first show up in the four hour. KO is the only four hour one that's positive. Healthcare, not a lot, a lot of red, not a lot of green. ABBV gave a daily DTS on Friday. Uh, financials didn't haven't done as well this last week as as I thought. So we're watching the banks. You know, uh, Morgan Stanley a weekly DTS here, 72 percent are positive, and uh, you know 63 percent are above uh, are positive based on the three DTS. NVIDIA and uh, a AMD had a pretty, you know, both were higher, but will they continue this week? Uh, Consumer Services uh, recommended a couple weeks ago, and it's still looking pretty good, 83.3%. And utilities holding firm at 100 And real estate, you know, slacked off a little bit. So you can see some more red here. So if this is a uh, just a pullback, or as a full-fledged correction of the REITs, we may know next week um, if we start to see more daily DTS and a few weekly in some of its holdings. That would be the first clue. Um, in the Viper ETF, I think we're out of our uh, REIT positions in the last week. Overall, the components and the themes reports are not quite as bullish as the overall market. You know, robotics 77.8 as is cybersecurity and future med groups. Uh, genomics gauge, of course, healthcare was weak. Neuroscience at 50. Um, Self-drive, 60. So, you know, lithium um, flipped to positive uh, above its quarterly pivot. This is what I was talking about, the energy transition. Uh, FCX, Freeport, Macaron, and Southern Copper, both a weekly and closed above their pivots. And if we go back in here to uh, retail, not a lot of new ones here. And you know? also Costco and Amazon have both daily DTSs. So is that going to turn worse or better? Uh, and then lastly, into aerospace, uh, LHX, you know, flipped weekly D DTS. Oil and gas here also looks pretty. You know, they're next on mobile, um, you know, is above its quarterly pivot. But so here's the same sort of conclusion. Things to watch there. And then the uh, NQ, the big the big tech, you know, um, and Dow's largest gauge. Um, really like the chemical stocks. So I'll be kind of looking at those during the week. We continue to put up new things on the Viper report. Uh, market internal single upside breakout that was right ahead of the Fed meeting when the sentiment was pretty high and a lot of put buying was going on and shows you why I was looking for an upside rather than a downside break and also on the on the main page we have the current positions as of the start of last week I will be updating these too so and there's a link if you would like to subscribe you know to either of the products and there are some openings in October if any of you want to become much more knowledgeable about the markets we still have mentoring slots available I hope you found this video valuable if you did or you didn't let me know and hope you have a great week in the markets jobs report on Friday could be kind of screwed up because of the pending strikes as well as the weather so always one month or one you know economic report does not set a trend thank you